when you write a filtering function, it's pretty much just like a regular function on the outside. You give it a name, but it doesn't need input parameters. Instead, inside, you use the begin, process, and end script blocks. These things are specifically designed to accept pipeline input or objects from the pipeline as input and to process those objects one at a time and do something with them. Here's a basic example. Here's the basic model for a filtering function. The function keyword followed by a name for the function. Inside the function are three named script blocks, begin, process, and end. Code can only exist within these three script blocks. It can't be outside of them within this kind of function. The idea here is that multiple objects can be piped into the function. When that happens, the begin script block executes first. Then the process script block executes once for each object that's piped in. Finally, after each object has been processed, the end script block executes. Within the filtering function, specifically within the process script block, you'll use the dollar sign underscore variable to represent the current pipeline object. That lets you work with it. Now, if you don't need the begin and the end script blocks, you don't have to have them. I usually put them in there anyway, and they're empty just because I kind of like it to look complete, but you don't have to. However, what is important is that no code can exist outside of those three script blocks. So if you're not using them all, that's fine, but you can't have any extra code floating around inside the function. Some more notes. Uh, anything written with write output gets piped as the output of the function. So it gets piped to the next commandlet in the pipeline. That allows the function to not only accept pipeline input, but it allows it to become a real member of the pipeline by passing objects or piping objects onto the next thing in the pipeline. Here's sort of a, a graphic of what it looks like. Let's get a visual look at how these filtering functions work. Let's say I run a commandlet, such as get process or get service, which returns a bunch of objects. I pipe those to my filtering function, and I might pipe the output of my function to yet another commandlet. So the first commandlet runs and generates its objects. Those objects are then piped to my function. Inside the function are my begin, process, and end script blocks. First, the begin script block runs. It does whatever it needs to do, maybe setting up a database connection, for example. It might not produce any output at all, but if it does write anything to the pipeline by using write output, then those objects which it writes will be piped on to the next commandlet. Next, the process script block runs, one time for each object that was piped in. Since three objects were piped in, that means it'll run three times. Inside the process script block, I can use the dollar sign underscore variable to refer to the current pipeline object that I'm processing. The script block does whatever it needs to do, and any output it produces is done by using write output, which writes objects to the pipeline for the next commandlet to deal with. Finally, the end script block executes, doing whatever it needs to do, such as closing files or database connections. Again, it might not produce any output at all, but if it did so using write output, those objects would also be passed on to the next commandlet. This whole process allows a single function to receive multiple objects on the pipeline and deal with them one at a time in much the same way that PowerShell's own commandlets work. Here's an example of a filtering function. I've made a function named pinghost, which contains a process script block. In it, I'm assuming that the current pipeline object is a computer name or IP address, and I'm executing a WMI query, which uses the current pipeline object. When I get my results back, I check to see if the status code is zero. If it is, I output the original computer name to the pipeline. If it isn't, I don't output anything. The last thing this script does is call a function, piping the two computer names in. When I run this, you can see that only the pingable name was output by the function. That's why these are called filtering functions. I've filtered out unreachable names, and I might pipe the reachable names on to another commandlet to do something with them. Pause this video and use your lab guide to complete the tasks in the lab. When you're finished, resume playing the video, and I'll walk you through a sample solution. Here's my solution for lab 6-1. I want to acknowledge that the conditions of the lab instructions definitely push you in a direction that's perhaps less PowerShell oriented, meaning you probably could have accomplished this task with a one-liner rather than a script if you'd wanted to. But this is a script we'll be building on, so I needed you to do it this way. I've created a function called getDriveInfo. 
In it, I've defined a process script block. That first line uses get WMI object to retrieve the Win32 logical disk class from the computer name contained by the current pipeline object, which means I'm expecting computer names to be piped into this function. I'm adding a filter so that only local drives are returned, not network drives, removable storage, or optical drives. For each drive that comes back, I'm simply outputting several properties of the drive. The last line in the script calls the function by passing in a couple of computer names so that we can see the output. Now there are some problems with this approach I've taken. One problem is that only one bit of information is being piped out of the pipeline, right? I'm losing information. In other words, if I have computers which were not reachable, I've lost track of those computer names. They're gone because I'm just outputting the computers which were pingable. I'm also not outputting anything other than the fact that they were pingable. I'm not giving out the response time, the address that responded. So here's a solution for that. Instead of just piping out a simple object like a string, we're going to make a custom object and pipe it out. And it's going to contain the computer name, whether or not it was pingable, we'll make that a true or false, the response time, and the responding IP address. So we're going to construct that custom object and we're going to create it as the output of our function. And it takes a few steps to do this, so let's walk through what they are. The first step is to create a blank custom object that you can work with. You'll do this by running new object and giving it the object type of object. That's a very generic type of object, so you're getting a blank canvas to work with. You'll assign the resulting object to a variable so that you can continue working with it. You may see folks using the object type PS object instead. That's fine, and it gives you the same result. So creating an object is simple. Just use the new object commandlet to create either a generic object or a generic PS object. They're about the same thing. Assign the object to a variable to retain it. As you can see, when I pipe this new object to get member, it doesn't have many members, just the basic members that all objects have in PowerShell. The next step is to add properties to your blank custom object. You'll primarily be adding properties of a type called note property, which contain a static value. To do so, take your blank custom object and pipe it to the add member commandlet. Tell it to add a note property, give it a name for the property, and then give it a value to put into the property. So I'll start by creating a new object, and then I'm going to pipe it to add member. I always add note properties. I provide a property name and a value to go into this property. I'll repeat this twice, and then pipe my resulting object to get member. And you can see that my two new properties and their values are in the object's member list. Step three, repeat. Just keep adding members or properties to your custom object until it contains all the information you need and then write it to the pipeline using write output. So here's the entire process illustrated. I start by piping some objects into my filtering function. I do something with the input object, uh, ping a computer, look up something in a database, whatever. When it comes time to produce my output, I start by running new object to create a new blank object. I then pipe that to add member to add a note property. I do that again to add a second property. When I'm finished adding properties, I write the custom object to the pipeline by using write output. So I'm taking my original filtering function, ping host, and modifying it to use objects. The big changes are here. I'm getting the ping object's response time into a variable, creating a new custom object, and then adding the current computer name or IP address to a new property called name. I'm adding a second property for the response time. If the status code for the ping was zero, I add a responding property with the value of true. Otherwise, I add a responding property with the value of false. Finally, I write the object out to the pipeline. When I run this, you can see that instead of plain text, I'm getting real objects. Because they only have three properties, PowerShell formats them as a table for me. Every computer is included, whether it was reachable or not. I could then pipe these objects to where object if I wanted to filter out the unreachable ones and do something with just the reachable ones. Having this information in objects gives me the flexibility to do anything I want with them. Pause this video and use your lab guide to complete the tasks in the lab. When you're finished, resume playing the video and I'll walk you through a sample solution. Here's what I came up with for lab 6-2. I've created a function called getDriveInfo. In and I've defined a process script block. 
the first line uses getWMIObject to retrieve the Win32 logical disk class from the computer name contained by the current pipeline object, which means I'm expecting computer names to be piped into this function. I've added a filter so that only local drives are returned, not network drives, not removable drives, not optical drives. For each drive that comes back, I'm creating a new PS object. To it, I add a note property containing the computer name. Then I do a bit of math to figure out how much free space is on the current drive measured in megabytes. Note that especially large values here may generate errors, as PowerShell version 1 can't perform math with especially large numbers. Now, I'm making sure that the free space value is treated as an integer by PowerShell, which will strip the number's fractional component, and then I'm adding it to another property. Finally, I create one last property. It contains the drive letter from the current drive, and I output my custom object with its three properties to the pipeline. The last line of this script actually runs the function, piping in the local host name. It then sorts the output objects by free space in descending order, filters out those which have free space greater than 10 megabytes, and then selects just the computer name and drive letter. The result? A list of computers and drives with less than 10 megabytes free, sorted with the least free space shown first.